Welcome to Asika Soul Tie Friends. As far as opening hand goes, I, I do like it, but uh, we've got one land, so that is not that good. So let's go to Mulligan on this one. And that's going to be Brainstorm with Rampant Growth. Yeah, I think I kind of like I don't really want to go past that. Past six. So, yeah, let's see if we can't make this work. So let's go ahead and keep this, and then let's see what card we want to put on the bottom. I think at this point, I kind of like... Do we want Vincer on this one to send the commander back to the command zone? Because I do like Toxic Deluge. Let's do this. Let's put Vincer on the bottom, because I, I kind of like Arcolo. So let's click OK. And our opponent's going to be on play, so hopefully we draw into another land. But uh, but yes, welcome to Asika Soul Tie Friends. I'll kind of talk about the build here in just a second. But let's go and cover our commander. So uh, we're playing a Soul Tie build of Asika. There's no red or white in here. I know it is five colors, but, uh, you know, we'll get into that here in a second. Um, let's go and lead, if, lead off with uh, Breeding Pool. And since we do have Rampant Growth, I, I like shocking this in. That way we can be online for uh, Brainstorm. So uh, we're playing Asika, God of the Tree, Vigilance. Uh, tap, add one mana of any color. Then Legendary Creatures you Control have Tap, uh, add one mana of any color. Then we also have the Prismatic Bridge. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or Planeswalker card. Uh, put that card onto the bottom uh, put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And that's going to be Cultivator's Caravan. So, <laughs> off of Mishra's Workshop. All right. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, let's go ahead and go for Brainstorm. Uh, we, we've got our work cut out for us. Luckily, we do have Toxic Deluge. So, that's going to... Ooh, look at that. That's going to be Mana Crypt and Abrupt Decay on Cultivator's Caravan. Yeah. I like that. All right. So, let's put Arcalus back on top. And then we're going to draw into... Vrasa's Contempt next turn? Yeah, I think that'll work. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's going to be Lightning Greaves on the battlefield, and we'll see exactly what we'll end up using this Abrupt Decay for, but if, yeah, if we can pop that Cultivator's Caravan, kind of slow their uh, their main a little bit, that'll definitely help us out. So um, let's lead off with Drowned Catacomb. It's going to come into play untapped, and we ended up going for Mana Crypt. But either way, we're not going to be able to go Rampant Growth and Abrupt Decay. So, so let's do this. Let's go Mana Crypt. And I think I like going for Rampant Growth. Yeah, that's going to be a good option for us. So let's tap down Green. Uh, let's tap down Mana Crypt. And I think we want to... So we do. We need one more Black Source if we want to be online for Vrasis Contempt. So let's go and grab a Swamp. That way we're good. And then uh, anything else, pass the turn over to our opponent. Uh, Plank gets Toroth, uh, God of Fury. Um, trample, whenever a creature or Planeswalker our opponent controls is dealt excess damage, or non-combat damage, Toroth deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent then, Toroth's Hammer. Um, a quick creature has Chaos Wand. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a fun, uh, abrupt decay target. And then, uh, it deals three damage to any target, return it to its owner's hand. A quick creature gets plus three as long as it is legendary, then equip four, two. So, and that's going to be Hammer on the battlefield. If they're going to go Voltron, yeah, let's just kind of leave up Abrupt Decay and see. I mean, we've got Vrasus Contempt and we have Abrupt Decay open, so... I think what we might end up doing on this one is just kind of holding back and seeing what sort of game plan they develop. So um, let's go for the Mana Crypt trigger. Let's go and choose Tails on this one. There we go. One the flip. We are one for one on those. And then it's going to be Armix. Okay, so we can get Armix down and still leave up Abrupt Decay. Yeah, I think I kind of like that. It's going to be a 3-2. We can start swinging in. Um, we did... We cut ourselves off of Sika at least early right now. But with Worldly Tutor, we can find some sort of mana source or something like that. So we can either bank on Abrupt Decay, or if they get a creature down, go for Lightning Greaves. We need to leave up Brass's Contempt. So let's do this. Let's just leave up Brass's Contempt. Um, that'll keep us open on Worldly Tutor. We'll see exactly what we end up grabbing. But I kind of like leaving up some sort of spot removal. Um, that way we just don't uh, die to some sort of big Voltron threat. Or at least we do have uh, Brass's Contempt active. So um, we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, TCG Player. If you're looking for some of the new uh, Caldheim, or Caldheim cards, either way. <laughs> whatever you're looking for. That's going to be Hammer. Yeah, I think we're good with this. That's going to be a three. And that's their only Voltron option. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's go Abrupt Decay because this is going to be active right now. So, let's go for Abrupt Decay. It's going to take care of Palladium Mirror. And then uh, that'll kind of slow roll any sort of crazy stuff that they're going to end up going for. Um, also, let's give a quick shout out to MTGO Traders. You're going to play the new set on Magic Online. They've got you covered. Um, let's give a quick shout out to InkGaming.com. If you're looking for some play mats or anything like that, InkGaming.com slash Jolt is going to get you 10% off. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to directly support cool content like this, um, there's a link down in the description below. 
<laughs> but if you're keeping score at home, it is officially free time. So, all right, so we run into God Eternal Rones. <sighs> yeah, I think at this point, we just want to try to hit a green source. That way we can end up going for a Sika. So let's just pass the turn. Um, we still got Vras as a Contempt. That way, if they do try to reload on another Voltron threat, we at least have that sort of answer. Now, let's talk about this Asika build. So this is Sultai Friends. You may have heard the term um, Super Friends. And if you haven't heard, that basically just means a deck with a ton of Planeswalkers. And so one of the cool things about... All right, we're just getting... <laughs> <laughs> Galvanic Blast to the face. I like it. All right, that's going to put us down to 24. And then uh, we'll let them get the turn going. Uh, but yeah, so with the Sika, you know, Sika is five color. You know, if you come across this video and you're wondering why I have a strict soul type build of it, um, that's just a personal choice. Um, with the Sika, it is green on the front and then five color on the back. So that's going to make whatever a Sika build you go for, um, it's going to be five color. Now, if you've never built a five color deck, you know, as you branch into more... So we can worldly tutor to put at least one creature on top. That way we draw into it. Yeah, let's go for that. I'm kind of cool with this shakeup. So let's go worldly tutor. Um, that way we can at least put something on top and then we'll draw a fresh grip of everything else. So let's get this popped out really quick. And I think what we'll end up going for, let's go for uh, Nissa. Let's put Nissa on top of our library. So that's going to work out. They only have a Mistress uh, Workshop active, so this will be pretty good. And the, ooh, oh yeah. We've got Nissa Arkelos. Yes, this is exactly what we want to see. And Guy's Cradle. So. Uh, but yeah, if you've never built five color, um, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're going to build the Sika, you can definitely build the prismatic bridge version. You know, put in big creatures, have fun, go for your upkeep triggers. Um, the vigilance and add mana is a wonderful thing, especially if you build your entire deck around legendary creatures. You know, that is something that's going to allow you to swing in and attack and still allow you to pump out a ton of mana um, on your second main phase. So one thing to definitely keep in mind Basically, when you're building a Sika, is that if you have some sort of legendary creature package you want to run, you know, maybe some of your favorite legendary creatures, um, limit the number of colors unless you just have this, like, awesome, awesome mana base. You know, it's just something that as you get into more colors, you dilute the, the efficiency of the deck, if that makes sense. So, there we go. Anyway. Long story short, that's why I'm building a super soul type focused uh, build of the deck. So, um, we have Telling Time. We're going to be able to put one on top. I, guess, I think we do like both of these. Or do we want Thrix on top or do we want Omnixilus? I, I think at this point, yeah, I think I actually kind of like Omnixilus, especially if we're playing a deck uh, against a deck like this. So let's put Omnixilus into our hand and let's put a card on top of our library. Let's go and put Bayou on top. I, I just want to make sure we're hitting our land drops and then we'll put Thrix on the bottom. Yeah, Omnixilus is going to give us some sort of you know, slow roll wind condition, which is pretty nice at this point. So, one the flip on this Mana Crypt trigger, and we hit Soul Ring too, which is always a good feeling. All right, so let's lead off with Forest. Let's go Soul Ring. It's going to be one, two. And I think we want to go for a Sika. Or we can set up Arkelos. Yeah, let's give this a shot. This would be a good spot removal test for our opponent. So let's go for Arkelos, because once we get Arkelos down first, um, that's going to allow us to tap it down for mana, kind of control the board out. So let's do that. So let's tap down Mana Crypt. That's going to be one, two. Have Arkelos come down, and then anything else pass the turn. Um, this is also another reason why I went kind of heavy soul tie with the deck. You know, we have a lot of double green, uh, double blue, double black. Um, if you start adding in red and white into a deck like this, you know, you are getting those really nice, you know, path to exile sorts of plash here, but you're also just kind of slowing your roll turns one through five. So that's why this is a heavy soul type build. But yeah, it's commander. You can build whatever you want. If you want to build five color legendary or just have a Sika be the swap out commander for your Captain Sisse deck or something like that. Hey, have some fun. Now, cool interactions in the deck that work with the Seeker really well. That's definitely going to be Arkelos. Um, being able to give Arkelos that tap down ability, um, especially with the Seeker's uh, Vigilance and Mana ability, that's going to allow us to kind of control the board state. We also have King Mac in here, which is really cool. If you oh, okay, that's going to be Warm Coil Engine. So we've got some, uh, we've got a clock on our opponent. Okay, we can get some stuff moving. All right, so we've got Guy's Cradle. The only good thing is that. We can jump block on Wormquill Engine. It's going to allow them to really uh, get ahead on life total. But we do have some removal in here that we can use. So we'll figure out what we can do. So it's going to be 6-6 six, six with Shroud. At the very least, um, 
Never mind, toxic deluges in the graveyard. Uh, we can find damnation at some point to kind of hit the reset on the board. So they're going to swing in for six. It's going to drop us down to 18. As long as we can just get creatures on the battlefield, that's going to be important. And then we'll worry about the uh, the life total at a later point. So um, let's go for Mana Crypt. Choose Tails on this one. Lost the flip. That's going to put us down to 15. And that's going to be Polluted Delta. So Guy's Cradle is going to tap down for extra mana. Let's go Guy's Cradle. Let's go for Asika. So we have a Sika on the battlefield. If we end up going for, it's going to be one, two that we can tap down for green with the uh, Nissa Vastwood Seer. Yeah, and actually, if we do it this way, this is going to be Obnixilis. And then let's go for Nissa Vastwood Seer. So what we're going to do in this, is we're going to go and tap down Arcalos for one green man. It's not really going to matter, uh, but we're at least going to go and get Nissa onto the battlefield. So there we go. Let's get Nissa onto the battlefield. Search your library for a basic forest. Okay, then anything else we will pass the turn. So they've got four cards in hand. They did hit that Wheel of Fortune. I mean, if they've got a board wipe, so be it. We're probably looking at something like Blasphemous Act or Storm's Wrath. Um, any of the four mana, five mana, red wraths, definitely don't want to see it. But I think with their build, we're probably going to be okay on uh, any sort of uh, board wipes. The main thing right now is we just need to stop this kind of worm coil bleeding. But even if we don't close this game out, this is definitely what... Uh, you know, what we want to do, you can see where we can tap down Arkelos um, using Asika's ability that's going to make their stuff enter the battlefield tap. So that way, if they did have another sort of Voltron threat, they wanted to swap Lightning Greaves on. And um, we've got that option. Um, like I mentioned with King Mac, um, King Mac, I think it has inspired. And in fact, let me look that up real quick. Yeah, so it has inspired. And whenever it becomes untapped, we get to exile target creature. So that's something that we could definitely use. Well, not with Lightning Greaves, but you can see how good it be, would be. And with the build like this, it looks like our opponent's going to hold off. So we'll take it. We got some land drops. We got Pluto Delta. Let's go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt Trigger. Won the flip. That's a good feeling. <laughs> Definitely want to start winning those. And I think at this point, do we want to scry with Temple? Or do we want to get the double Pluto? Yeah, I think we got to go for the double Pluto Delta. So let's go Pluto Delta. This is going to be three life. Put three plus one counters on Omnixilis. Yeah, we're already looking at a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I, I like that. So um, let's go for Grackmaw. And so they do have the option to unequip the hammer, and it's going to be three damage. So I think at this point, what we're going to end up doing is, I, th I think we're just going to go ahead and proactively crack polluted delta. Because that way we're not really in a weird spot to where we already have that, um, ooh, and actually with Mystic Sanctuary, we don't have the three islands though, unfortunately, but I think what we'll do is actually we'll leave that in there. Um, let's go and grab Triome. Yes, we'll have that into the battlefield untapped. That's going to be an extra three. Oh, that's... <laughs> well, thank you, Arkelos. It's always a nice feeling to have a tri-land, like a dual land. All right, so it's going to pop them down to 30. Yes, definitely going to use that ability. It's going to make it a 9-9. Nine, nine. And then anything else, I think what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and tap down Arkelos, just to add some blue mana. That way we can kind of slow their roll on this. So, And then anything else... No, we're going to go and pass the turn. So um, we do have three lands in the hand. At this point, one of the cool things about this deck is that we do have um, a lot of our blue X spells. You know, um, Pull from Tomorrow, we've got Stroke of Genius, uh, just for situations like this, where we've got the board state developed, and we want to <laughs> dictate of the Twin Gods. Okay, so we got that flashed in. We'll see. Um, they do have Sword of Truth and Justice, protection from white and blue. So, But at this point right now, that doesn't really matter. We're going to be able to stop whatever's happening. If we can somehow keep Obnixilis online with the Worm Coil Engine, um, then we might be able to do something about the... at least kind of stopping the tokens, but we'll see what they end up going for. Okay, so they're going to return it to the hand. Where is this three... Oh, they're sending this damage up top. It's going to put us down to eight. They can recast it again. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to get some hammer damage going. But, like I mentioned, even if we don't win, this this is the exact build that we're going for with the Sikas, being able to develop a board state like this. Um, with them being tapped... Oh. Uh-oh. Uh. Let's do a quick little check on all of our creatures. These appear to be all <laughs> one or more colors. Okay. Um. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll return Sika back to the command zone. And then uh, poor Grackmaw is like, hey, I get some triggers, but you're not here, buddy. So, all right, click OK. And at least we still end up getting the Hydra on the battlefield. We'll take that. So there we go. We got a 3-3. That buys us some time. But if we can hit a, a blue draw spell, that would definitely kind of help us get out from underneath this. Um, at least we can stop the 
because they're going to recast it and be able to go for that damage next turn. But we've got a little bit of time because the dictate is gone. So th that is something. So I was going to choose Tails on this one. Lost the flip. Uh-oh. Down to five. And then we draw into Worn Power Stone. All right. So let's get a Sika back on the battlefield. And I guess at this point, we're actually going to... Yeah, let's get a Sika down. I think at this point, we're, yeah, we're just going to dump it out. So let's go for a Sika. Let's make the land drop. That's going to be Temple of Malady. We're going to get the Scry and the Scurry and the Fever. Um, Assassin's Trophy. Yeah, we'll put that on top. It may be too late for that, but yeah. I mean, just to have a uni universal piece of removal, we'll, we'll certainly take it. So that's going to be one, two, tap down Guy's Cradle. And then anything else. I guess we could technically leave up a Sika. Now we need to leave up a creature because if they can somehow get rid of both of our creatures, then they're going to be able to swing in for combat damage. So anything else, pass the turn. Uh, but yeah, when you've got a uh, all one or more color board state against all this dust, that's not too good. But uh, but you can see what we're trying to go for with a build like this. You can see how potent that Asika ability is. Um, you know, if we're not worried about swinging into a Death Touch Worm Coil engine, uh, being able to give all your creatures that vigilance and then swing in. Uh, get that combat damage in, and then on the back end, use them for mana. Um, that is a very good thing. Or just simply just use them as blockers. You know, our life total got in about halfway point, and we're able to leave them up as blockers, but we could have swung in two at the same time. So, but we didn't want to make any trades. So, let's see what they're going for. That's a lot of mana right there. Apex, <laughs> Apex of power. Um, exile the. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's have some fun. So that's going to be Mana Vault, Crashing Drawbridge, Seething Song, Hammer, Helm of the Ho- Goodness, <laughs> Blasphemous Act. Okay, so let's see how they go for this. is going to be Seething Song. It's going to be 12 to- Man, this is- This is beautiful. It's nice to see things like this. So it's going to be Gamble. Let's see if they- They do have three cards in their hands, so let's see what they end up gambling for. Usually you can kind of tell if they, they whiff on the gamble, because the really good card goes to the graveyard. So let's see- Megas of the Wheel, yeah, so that was probably a dud. They probably went for some sort of red X spell, I bet. That's going to be Helm of the Host. Opponent's going to go for Bane of Uh But yeah, this will probably... W one of the other cool things about this deck is that with the Soul Tide build, we've got some really cool options in here. We've got uh, Rayon, R-A-Y-N-E, Rain, uh, maybe Rain. Uh, but she's going to give us that option to get some um, card advantage if they do decide to target our creatures. Um, if you're thinking about building a Seek and you just don't want to go on a Prismatic Bridge line of play, just pick some sort of color shard or color pair that has green as its base, and then just kind of branch out from there. You can definitely build a Seek, like a Gruul Seeka deck. If you wanted to build um, a Seeka Obzon, um, that would be a wonderful option, having an Obzon option that lets you tap down all of your creatures. Um, one of the cool things to just think about Asika is that you can just pretty much just do whatever you want. Have some fun with it. Okay, so that's going to be Toroff. That's going to get the... And also, if you came to this video for Toroff, this is a very good showing of what is uh, capable of the deck. So this is why it's always fun to post um, all the videos that I play. Because we get either way, you're getting a good showing for either from our commander or our opposing commander. So um, that's going to be Helm of the Host. That's going to be an extra copy of Toroff. My goodness, this is, this is something else. Yeah, and either way, we've got 6-5, six, 6-5, five, six, five, and a 6-6. Six, six. So not going to be able to stop it, even if we double block on this one. So we're just going to let the entire crew swing in. There we go. Good game for our opponent. You can see they've got some pretty cool stuff in there. Chaos Wand, different things like that. And that's going to drop us down. Down to negative 13. So um, I will definitely be recording more videos with the Sika. Um, I, I don't really know if I'm going to be making any changes other than I might be adding a few more kind of stampede effects. I think we do have Triumph for the Hordes in here, I think. Um, yes, we do. Uh, but you can see, you know, a board state like this, you know, having a few more kind of just tap all your creatures, swing and attack might kind of help out. But uh, we got off to a good start. Got to showcase the uh, Sika ability with Arkelos. You know, if we find King Mac or something like that, we can start exiling their creatures turn after turn. And so th there's a lot of value in this deck. So I'm excited to get some more games in it. But if you enjoyed the video, hey, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.